Marvel. DC. The Avengers. The Dark Knight Rises. Whedon. Nolan! Oh, hello, and welcome to another action-packed episode of G-Cinema. Today we're talking about Hollywood's most beloved cash cow of the last 10 plus years. Superheroes. Oh, I don't know if they're the biggest cash cow ever. Are they're we really doing movies. this joke they're every week? Shut the they're f up, Zanzi. Oh my god. Everybody loves superheroes. That's right. And today we've got ourselves a rundown of the big super names coming to theaters soon. Believe it or not, summer is coming. And that means you and your family are most likely to spend your time and money in a freezing cold theater while Hollywood steals your soul. Are we still talking about the superhero movies? Of course. A reboot of Superman is coming soon with director Zack Snyder and producer Chris Nolan. It's every fangirl's wet dream. Images of Henry Cavill as a man of steel is enough to make any woman swoon. What are your thoughts? I don't like Zack Snyder, and I don't like the idea of a dark Superman. I think they're really just trying to um, repeat the success of Nolan's Batman movies and the making them darker and stuff, but Superman isn't successful for the same reason as Batman is. I think it should be more lighthearted. I think. It should be different. I'm so excited about it because I didn't know anything about it, but then I looked it up and I saw Zack Snyder's name, Christopher Nolan's name, and the writer, I can't remember who, but I'm pretty sure he, he's a writer for Nolan. And that just seems too epic of a com combination for that to go bad, seriously. And I love Zack Snyder. I'm just worried that they don't know really what makes Superman work, but I'll keep an open mind until it comes out. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait until 2013 to catch this one. This summer marks the inevitable return of Spider-Man, but this time, he's more amazing. What do you think, Spider-Man? No, no, not a fan. I hated the old ones, I really did, and they're basically retelling the story and making Spider-Man an emo little boy. I mean, Spider-Man's always been an angsty teenager. Like, that's been essential to his character. I agree that I hate the fact that they are going back to the origin story. He's going to get bit by the radioactive spider again. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. How much money did the 2002 Sam Raimi movie make? Everyone knows about the spider, Uncle Ben, his inspiration to become a superhero. You don't need to tell it again. Well, the it's only silly. reason they're doing it is because if they don't make a Spider-Man movie ever so many years, they lose the copyrights to the material, which is just the Disney. worst reason to make a um, remake. But I will say this. I hated Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man, mm -hmm. and I love Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. I think he's perfect for the role. I've seen a few clips of him. I think he's going to be good, and I might just see it for him. One thing he, he did that surprised me, he's playing Spider-Man because, you know, he's English, so he has to adopt an accent, he, but he's playing him with a slight Queen's accent, which mm. Spider-Man has never had a Queen's accent before, but why the f*** shouldn't he? He's from Queen's. That's a good point. And I do like Andrew Garfield, so maybe that small fact will make it redeemable. Yeah. So, uh, there's some things I like about it, but I might not pay to see it. Hmm. The Amazing Spider-Man is directed by Mark Webb and hits theaters this July. And after 10 years, the Men in Black return to theaters, but does anyone really give a s***? No, no, they, they don't. don't. Now we're going to talk about other things while you watch Colleen's segment, Stalking and Talking. I'm Colleen Gillis, the killer she mock, and this is Walking and Stalking, where we walk and stalk people and ask them questions about their favorite superhero movies. What is your favorite superhero movie? Oh, goodness, I guess what comes to mind is that The Last Stand, X Men, X Men Last Stand, where Jean Grey dies. Um, Cause I really like Jean Grey. I always like super heroines, like Wonder Woman. Duh. Um, so. Yeah, I think probably that one. Spider-Man is the greatest superhero ever made. He's the only superhero that has to deal with real life problems as well as superhero problems. It's probably got to be X2 because uh, it's not about one superhero, you know, it's not that narrow. It's like uh, there's all these, it's a team of these superheroes, I guess. And uh, I love movies where a bunch of people are running away from the military even though they're the good guys. What is your favorite superhero movie? X-Men. Which is really well done. And there's a lot of characters. Are there any other movies coming up that you're excited for? The Dark Knight. Are you excited for the Avengers coming out? Um, I've been so busy. I didn't even know it was coming out. Um, 
So I guess I can get excited now. So thank you. This has been Colleen, the killer she moth, with walking and stalking. Back to you, Spider Man and Catwoman. But a baby can't eat another baby. I know, right? Oh, back to superheroes. Of course, there's the big one. That's right. The granddaddy of all superhero movies is coming out this year. The Dark Knight. The Avengers. Knight. The Dark Knight Rises. Really? After five movies, five movies build up, you're going to pick The Dark Knight over, over The Avengers? Yes. I totally am because I love The Dark Knight. I love Christopher Nolan, he's a genius, and I think that this is the most excited I've been for a movie in a really long time. I understand all that, but do you really think The Dark Knight Rises can top the success of The Dark Knight? The Dark Knight was so good. I feel like anything will pale in comparison. Whereas The Avengers, it's a brand new idea, they brought them all together, and they picked the most perfect man for the job. A director who I think has gone very underrated until now, Joss Whedon, who has done some of my favorite shows, some really solid work, and now this is his first big thing. I think, I think it'll be the highest grossing movie of all year. Well, I kind of have to agree that I think it's going to get extreme success at the box office. And admittedly, I am not familiar with Joss Whedon. I watched a little bit of Firefly, and that's it. But I mean, this is The Dark Knight Rises. It's a culmination of a trilogy, and it's the end, and who knows what's going to happen, what's Nolan going to do. He always puts his own spin on stuff. I am just, I'm insanely excited. I cannot wait for July. Well, agree to disagree. F*** you. Now, to give us his own valuable insight into the world of superhero flicks, here's Adam with Adam's Corner. Hey guys, Adam here, and this is my list for my top five all-time favorite superhero movies. And that's saying a lot, considering I don't usually go for movies in this genre, but here's my list. Number five on my list is Ang Lee's Hulk. I suppose what really made that movie work for me are Banna's scenes with Nick Nolte as his abusive father, because, I don't know, Eric Banna and Nick Nolte in that movie, they do such a strong job conveying the tragedy of a family that's torn apart by financial ruin and domestic violence and a murdered wife and mother that we finally do get a good, I think, visceral understanding of why Bruce Banner changes in the way he does. Uh, number four on my list is The Dark Knight, which I have very little to say about that hasn't already been said. Um, aside from, from some minor quibbles with that movie, like Christian Bale's raspy voice, for example, you know, I, I did admire how well Christopher Nolan transformed Batman into a kind of Shakespearean epic of sorts. And, you know, of course, the late Heath Ledger's stellar work as the Joker goes without saying. You really deserve the Oscar. Uh, number three on my list is Batman Returns. Now, if I, I slightly prefer this to The Dark Knight, it's because I love how you know nasty and politically incorrect that movie is, despite the fact that Tim Burton did admit he didn't read the DC comics when he set out to make the film. And I love how Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer and Danny DeVito are all playing these really lonely, wounded souls. Now, number two on my list is another Batman movie. This is Batman Mask of the Phantasm from 1994. Even as a young kid, I was impressed with how well this movie treated me like an adult. Kevin Conroy, to me, really captured the humanity of Batman as a character more than any of the other actors who've played that role. And, you know, he captured the isolation of Batman, his loneliness, even better than Michael Keaton did. And on that note, I should add that Mark Hamill remains to be my pick for the all-time best Joker. I mean, he's completely vicious, he's animated, he's anarchistic, and he's batshit crazy, no pun intended. It's like, it's like Malcolm McDowell's Alex and Clockwork Orange, I'm not even kidding. And uh, number one on my list is Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, which is my favorite superhero movie precisely because it's more about the real human being rather than about the alter ego. Spider-Man 2 is just right, you know? It's about Peter Parker. It's not really about Spider-Man, and it's about how hard it is for Peter to live his life away from fighting crime. And I don't know, I love Tobey Maguire in those movies. I love how he brilliantly conveys, especially in two, the geeky, stressed out, nerve-wracked college kid wrestling with his personal life. Uh, I love superheroes like that. And it's gonna be hard for me to accept Andrew Garfield in that role when his movie comes out. And on top of that, Maguire and Kirsten Dunst have really great chemistry in their scenes. 
uh, Alfred Molina's haunting portrayal of the doomed Doc Ock remains my personal favorite comic book villain performance ever, uh, even compared to Mark Hamill's Joker. And the movie has enough humor, action, and drama to keep it steady all the way through. It's the perfect superhero movie, and it's the perfect movie to round on my list. And that's it for my segment, folks. And until next time, see you at the movies. Thanks for tuning in, and remember, make mine Marvel. And make mine Nolan. I love you, Joss.